I'm JT. Welcome back. And joining us now is Jay Young, the CEO of King Operating. And I'll tell you what, uh, what a great idea to talk about now as we get jumping into 2023 on the oil production, where we're headed. My gosh, the supply and demand, where we've been for the last couple of years. Uh, Jay, welcome in. Thanks for being with me. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me on again. Appreciate it, JT. So with, with the Biden policies of what's been happening with the, the slowdown in production and trying to go more electric, you know, that's, uh, you know, certainly slowed down on our own independence, if you will, in the energy world. So when that happens, supply and demand start to change, prices start to move. And I know it's a global issue, not so much as much, uh, you know, impact as the United States being there solo. But there are things that can be done here to change the price and, and how we use energy and oil in this country. So why don't we first, Jay, start talking about the supply and demand for the next few years of oil production. Do you think it's going to be as robust as it has been, or is the globe going electric as well? That's a great question, JT, and I appreciate that. I'll tell you what's happening is is around the, around the United States especially, you know, we're not producing, we're not drilling for oil in the United States like we need to be to meet our demand, okay? Hey, electric cars sound like a good idea. You know, it's like, okay, hey, yeah, we take some gasoline off and we don't have spills or whatever the case may be. I mean, you know, it's not a secret that Biden has been against the fossil fuel industry since he became president. First day, signed, you know, no permits, no pipelines, no, no, you know. So that, that's that's not a problem. And I'll tell you what, you know, for us in the old business, we just sit back and go, and I, you know, it sounds like a good idea, but we're not ready for that. Right. Well, right. we're not going to be ready for that for years. So, you know, thinking that you can just shut down the all the permits or shut shut down, you know, and not be supportive of the oil and gas business, which is a it's a huge mm -hmm. that, that that's huge because when when your federal government, your state governments, you're talking to institutions that aren't putting money back into oil and gas, or you're not. Um, you know, public companies are not drilling back for oil and gas. Which I'm gonna, I supported Joe on one thing. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, there's about 100 on the other side, but there's one that I did support him on, which I'd be glad to talk about. What but, is it? You know, we're, well, okay. I'll, I'll, so four things, the reason why we don't have the oil in the United States like we, we should, right? We don't have the oil in the United States because our federal government's making it tougher State, state governments, you know, are making it tougher, institutions. But the big key here is companies. I mean, there's there's companies out here making billions and billions of dollars. Oil companies. Oil companies. Right. Our companies. I mean, all different kinds of companies. I mean, we're making money. And, I mean, I'm not saying that. I mean, our, our investors, we because of Biden coming last week, and he didn't phrase it right because he didn't know how to phrase things. To, to a lot of people and didn't know how to, how to how to talk about it, but he said, "Okay, hey, you know what? We're going to call this windfall profits tax, and we're going to say, you guys, you're making too much money. You're making money off the war, which is not, which whatever. But you know what? If a company makes money and puts it in the bank, or they decide to to distribute that out to shareholders, or you know, buy back their stock." What they should be doing, and this is, I'm not saying, I like his thought behind it. I don't think he phrased it right. But, you know, what what President Biden should have said is, hey, if you make all this money in the oil and gas business and you don't put that money back to work, then you need to pay taxes on it. Then we'll come after you. Now, right. that's what I agree with. All right, well, let's... Let, because what happens normally, and I've been in this business four generations, this is my... My sixth time to see oil and gas prices, you know, go 50% in one direction in my career. But I'm sure my great-grandfather, having 12 kids back there in West Texas, saw this a lot more than I did. But, you know, what, what normally happens during this time is when the price of oil, you know, goes up and up and up, and, and companies start making billions of dollars, what they normally do is they put it back in the ground and start drilling for oil and gas. This time they're not. And if they're not doing that, pay your taxes. Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm mad as a consumer, as, a, as somebody that buys gasoline, I'm mad because 
man, you're not putting the money back to work because what happens? Mm -hmm. The only reason and the only way that oil and gas prices will go back down is if we produce more. We're not going to produce more if we don't drill for it. And if we don't drill for it, we're not going to have it on the market, which means, you know, you stingy guys out there, um, you're, you're, you're not you're not putting it back to work like you should. You're putting it in your pocket. So, right. yeah, you should pay We're talking with pay J- a big tax. Jay Young, CEO of King Operating, about oil production and the lack thereof it here in the United States. And, and you made a good point that uh, we're not producing oil like we can. Is the United States capable of being 100% self-reliant when it comes to energy and oil production? Okay, that's that's two words, right? Okay, we, we do have a lot of oil here. I believe that's one thing Saudi Arabia said to Joe Biden when he went over there to beg for oil. Is number one, why are you over here? You got plenty of oil over there, you know, which is true. We don't have the infrastructure to produce. I mean, our addiction to oil, that's what thats what George Bush called it in his 2006 State of the Union address. Our addiction to oil is 20 million barrels a day. That's what we need. We're the biggest consumer of oil in the world, and we need oil. And so when we need 20 million barrels of oil, we don't have the infrastructure to drill it, produce it, refine it, uh, infrastructure of, of, of getting it from A to B. We don't have it. But we do have the infrastructure of, of 14 million barrels of oil. Mm-hmm. And we could export oil, export more than 14, which is what Trump was doing. That's, right. When they said we're energy independent, we weren't necessarily energy independent, meaning that we were producing enough oil in the United okay. States to – Okay. To meet our demands, we were just filling up our refineries, well, and we had to do something with it. How has the government gotten in the way of oil production here in the United States? The regulations, the shutting down? That's great, great question. The, the markets have dried up for oil and gas production, and biggest reason is because, you know, they they don't want to put that money back to work. They're saying, no, oh, this oil and gas game is a pretty expensive game. It's a, it's a, it's a long term it's we don't want it we we want to make sure that we're we're in a different situation so we don't have the support of our federal government but also too i mean there's there's a lot of people out there that are on these new boards like exxon had two or three new members of their boards that came on that were i mean they hated oil and gas california green tree huggers whatever you call them they're not green people like green you know literally green but right. they're, they're they're people that are they they don't want oil and gas at all period you know but, and i guess they don't mind paying you know five six whatever dollars at the pump because that's what's going to happen if we don't have if we don't have oil and gas do you believe that commodity we need, we need. Do you, jay do you believe the commodities like oil and gas are still good stock investments oh absolutely yeah 100 percent. i mean i we we uh you know in my book the upside of oil and gas investing i talk about you know, what, or my family and where, where I come from and all that. But I also talk about uh, investing in oil and gas. Just go buy a stock. I mean, I bought right. Ring Energy at two and a quarter, you know, at 250 and it's a, it's $3. I believe it's going to be a $5 stock in the next, um, in the next year or two. What's the, uh, you know? what, well, what's absolutely. the name, what, what's the name of your book again, Jay? It's called The Upside of Oil and Gas Investing. Very good. Upside of Oil and Gas Investing. Forbes was my publisher. I wrote it because I wanted I wanted to get the word out about good deals. There's always good deals out there. There's bad deals to invest in oil and gas. And I want everybody to know, hey, I mean, if you invest in me, not, it doesn't matter to me. But just don't invest in bad deals. There you go. You know, so I wanted to get to know more people. I wanted people to just see what, what it is and what's what's the good and bad points because you know it, it is 100 percent write off you get monthly income mm-hmm. but you know what man there's a lot of there's a lot of bad deals out there that that people put together that just you yeah, know yeah. there's, there's a ton you. of story well get his book his name is jay young he's the ceo of king operating everything you need to know and some more on oil production and, this and gas situation in the united states jay thank you for being with me and happy new year Thanks, JT. You too. Y'all take care and and, um, go to our website, kingoperating.com, for more information. Thank you.